What's going on guys, Coach Show, not at the Lions Den, we are at Hellfish MMA. Tim Carpenter, video two. If you haven't checked out the first video where I'm training him, make sure you check that out, make more sense. Uh, but we're in his flow dojo, so we're gonna have him kind of just give us a little tour and uh, see what we got in the gym. What do we got going on here? All right, this is the front desk where you sign your life away. Oh, pretty simple. We got bags to hit, mats to roll around on. Chairs for people to watch. No shoes on the mat. No yeah, shoes on the mat. That's uh, one of the few rules here is no shoes on the mat. I saw one guy do it once and we haven't seen him ever since. <laughs> then back here we just have more mat space. Um, most important thing with the martial arts school is mat space. Um, you want to be able to accommodate uh, ideally two classes at once so I could have like a jiu-jitsu class going on here and a Muay Thai class going on over there. Um, that way we could keep the flow going. Um, and this stuff is just like a little string and conditioning area. You got some dumbbells, squat rack, whatever this is called, grips and abs and stuff. And one of these, one of these cable machines that, with no cables on it yet. And a burst hyper and a skier. So these are mostly for me. Me and a couple other guys use them, but we don't do too much like strength and conditioning here. Um, this is mostly just so I can work out on my own. So for the gym, like biggest probably like investment was probably mats, you'd say? For sure, yeah. yeah. Um, so the mats are, good mats are always gonna cost you money, but they'll also last you a long time. So I've had these mats since we opened up. Oh, nice. Um, and they take a lot of abuse and they're still going strong, so. How much uh, square footage is this space? Whole place is uh, 3,800 square feet, I okay. believe. And then I think we have uh, 1,500, 2,000 square feet of mat, mat space. Most of our classes are at night between like five and nine. You don't, you don't, don't need, need a time. You don't need much. You need uh, quality instruction, good training partners, and mats. You don't need really any fancy equipment. Um, martial arts is it's like humans fighting humans. Yeah. So yeah. You don't need too much equipment. You what got would a you couple of punching bags and pads and, and gloves. That's about it. What would you say is like a, a dumb investment you think people make when they buy stuff for their gym? The biggest mistake I see people make is trying to start big right off the bat. Okay. Um, trying to like. So even this place, I didn't have this for a couple of years. It started off very small, mm -hmm. and uh, um, a lot of a lot of the most successful people I know they start off um, renting space in an existing gym mm -hmm. and just using a little bit of mat space there, and then they grow out from there. Um, trying to start like too big too soon is the biggest mistake people make, and then you know just trying to be fancy. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's simple. People when people want to learn, they want to learn quality techniques and good instruction. They don't need. Uh, Bells and whistles, really. Gotcha. You know. And then, uh, what's a hellfish? Hellfish, uh, stole from The Simpsons. Okay. <laughs> All right. This in the Second World War II. Um, it was from a Simpsons episode. That's where I got the logo from. <laughs> I just like the logo. Right. Um, there's a weird story behind it. it. Wouldn't make sense if I told you. Okay. Yeah, I just really, I just always like the logo, and uh, you know. Yeah, I was just always curious. I don't know. We changed a little bit. We took the cigar out of his mouth. Ah, that's maybe why it's familiar. Because there is, yeah, now yeah, I think I talking about. Took the cigar out of his mouth and put a black belt on him. And we changed his color from red to white. Okay. Right. Yeah, all right. There you go. There's the secret behind Hellfish. <laughs> uh, so pretty much what we're going to do now is I actually have a, my first competition on Saturday. So he's going to walk me through the basics of jujitsu. Then we're going to kind of go over um, like my technique that we want to implement for uh, the, one, the competition coming up, like takedowns, passing guard, and then a basic submission. So you guys are gonna go through the process with me, and then hopefully it's a good video, and uh, you see me execute some of the stuff that we're gonna be talking about. Uh, so we are gonna dive into that next. All right, Coach Tim, run us through the basics of jujitsu, what it is, how it works, all that kind of stuff. All right, so. Uh... Jiu-Jitsu is a grappling martial art, so it's like wrestling. Right? But instead of uh, trying to pin the guy on his back to win or score takedowns, the goal is to make the person give up. So either choke them, arm lock them, hyperextend their elbow, twist their shoulder, or attack their legs. Um, so it's both self-defense and sport. So the sport of Jiu-Jitsu is designed to sort of um, reward what would get you a win out in a street fight. Okay. okay? So um, it's pretty simple we'll break down the uh the point system and the rules what you can and can't do so i can't like elbow people in the face not yet not yet you can elbow uh if you're in an mma fight what and about what about fight. like can you can you do this in jujitsu uh, with two like, hands like you're strangling somebody you like can, i should do my brother so you can't you can't like choke them like that mm -hmm. 
but you can use that to like keep them off. Like if you're right. trying to come into me, I can put okay. my hands there, but I, right. you're not allowed to squeeze. So can't do that. I mean, you can, you can, and this is what I tell people the first time they compete. You can do pretty much anything as long as the ref doesn't see it. Ah, okay. Um, it's up to the ref. If you get called on it, you might get disqualified. Are there di dirty moves that happen? There are dirty moves. We'll go over some of the things that you are definitely not allowed to do. Okay. All right. So we're going to break down the points, all that kind of stuff next. So let's do it. All right. So first we're going to go over, um, we're going to start from the, from the feet and go down to the ground. Ba the basic process of a jiu-jitsu match, like I said, it'd be the same way if you were to get in a fight out mm -hmm. in the street. Okay. So all fights and all jiu-jitsu matches start on the feet. All right. So um, we're never going to stand just like, like this, mm -hmm. right? like you're straight up, yep. like any other sport you want to be in an athletic stance. So basically we'll start a little bit lower. All right. So whatever foot you have forward, keep that lead hand down. Okay. And that's like your primary defensive hand and keep your right hand just up a little bit. So you basically want a little bit of stagger like this. Mm -hmm. So the idea here is your lead leg would be the most likely thing that I would attack. So if I were to try to grab it, you already have that hand there, just stuff it under my arm. And now there's no way I'll be able to actually get to your leg. Okay. Gotcha. So it's a simple way to think when you start off, whatever foot you have forward, that hands down lower, your other hand, you can use that to attack and push. So if I go to grab that lead leg, just take this hand. You don't even need to move it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So a takedown will score you two points. All right. So now you're going to let me get to your leg. Mm. So I come in, pull the leg up. I'm just going to drag him to the mat. So I'm just going to bring you down. That's two points. Okay. So you get a takedown. Now, if I, if I, if your butt hits the floor and you pop right back up to your feet, it's nothing. I would get an advantage. Okay. okay, I need to take you down and maintain top sure. position for about three seconds and you'll get two points. Okay. Gotcha. So now this position, anytime you're engaging your partner's legs, your opponent's legs, whether it's like an open guard like this, he's got his feet on your hips, you might have your legs wrapped up, you might end up in the full guard like this, you take him down with a double leg, you end up like trapped in his closed guard. All right. This position for him gives him a lot of attacks. My goal, is to get out of his legs to a pin, either on the side or the mount, okay? So a simple way to do that is I'm gonna push the leg down, my arms go under, grab the shoulder, and stack them up. I got to side mount. This is what's known as side mount here. Getting past the legs to a, a position of control is worth three points, okay? So I took him down past his guard, it's five points, all right? Next position you would go to, all right, so now your legs are out of play. You can't attack me with your legs. Now I'll go to the mount. I slide my knee over to the mount. Four points, okay? You hold this position for four points, or for three seconds, you get four points. All right, now let's just do a simple, he's gonna bump and roll over to his stomach, try to escape. All right, he pops up to his knees. When he pops up, I put my hooks in, so we call this hooks, put my legs in. I'm gonna roll you to the side here. So now I have control of his back. This is another four points. This is the most advantageous, advantageous position you can be in in a fight, okay? He has really nothing he can do to me, and I, have, I can do basically whatever I want to him, okay? Um, so the next step from here, the most basic submission in jiu-jitsu would be the rear naked choke. I'm gonna bring my arm around the neck, grab the trap, pull my hand out, go behind, and squeeze for the finish, okay? So that would be the end of the match. So we'll go through it one more time. So we start on the feet. Uh, reach your arms up. I'm just gonna pop his arms up. Double leg around. Two points. All right, now push the leg down. I pass the guard to the side now. Three points. So I'm up five, nothing. I slide to the mount. Four points. I'm not too good at math. What is that? Uh, I'm lost. Five plus four. I just nine equates. points. Nine points. I'm up by nine. Nine nothing. He rolls over to his stomach. All right. He pops up. I put my hooks in. Another four points. We roll to the side. So now I'm up thirteen nothing. Arm goes around the neck. Lock up the submission. Squeeze and finish. Match is over. All right. So that would be the most basic sort of ideal situation that would happen in a match. You get a takedown, pass the guard, mount, take the back, submit. So there's a couple more positions I want to go over. 
a couple more ways to score points. So we went from the ideal, right? So now let's say you took me down, you end up with my close guard. All right, so you just scored two points on me. So now I'm behind, right? So what I wanna do is reverse the position. So what I'll do is I'll clear your hands to the mat. I'm gonna sit up. I get up to my elbow here and then get up to my hand. Now I'm gonna grab his arm. I'm gonna bump and roll him over. So in jiu-jitsu, we call that a sweep, going from your guard, using your legs and reversing the position. That's two points, okay? But I also ended up in the mount, which is another four points. That was a six point move. You scored two for your takedown and I scored six for a sweep and a mount, okay? And then it's the same. So if you were to bridge me over, if you were to trap my arm, I just wanna go this way. He traps my arm and he bumps and rolls me this way. That's just an escape. There's no points for that, hmm. okay? So there's another way to score points is sweeping. Um, if at any point I were able to lock up a submission, you get this one. If I come here, I turn, trap the shoulder, and go into an arm bar and make you tap, at any point, match is over. Okay? Um, there will be also be times where let's say I throw the arm bar on, I have it locked really tight, but somehow you're able to yank your arm out. All right, we get back to neutral. I would get an advantage for almost getting the arm bar. So if there's a tie score or no score, and I have an advantage for almost submitting you, I would win the match. And I get no points for throwing my arm. No, no points for escapes. Okay. Um, but let's say you you throw my legs past, you get tight to side mount for two seconds, but then I'm able to get back to my guard. You would get an advantage for almost passing my guard. Okay. okay? So um, you can get advantages for almost completing successful attacks. Like if uh, we're on the feet and you're attacking me the whole time, you almost get me down or you take me down, but I pop back up, you would get advantages for that. Um, so, in the event of a tie score or no points scored, they go to advantages. When do I learn how to sit like that, though? You can't do this yet? I do. Oh, is that it? That's not bad. Yeah. I'm not too... My feet are going numb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got to get less, less muscle mass on your legs. That's the secret. That's, I think, the basics of the, uh, the point system that, you're gonna, that you want to know. Okay. Um, and now, I guess, maybe we should go over some things that you can't do. Yes. Okay. So one of the main things that uh, people get disqualified for is called slamming, okay, to get out of a submission. So uh, if I get you in a triangle, this is one of the most common things you'll see. You'll see somebody get caught in what's called a triangle choke like this, and then the person on top is going to stand up and pick them up off the mat like that, okay? So what he just did by putting me down gently is totally legal. But if he were to slam me down on my back, it would be an instant DQ for him, okay? Um, and another thing that you can't do is called reaping. So once you lay back, uh, this happens from uh, leg lock positions. Okay, so if I have Joe in a leg lock, I want to come on this side. So I have Joe in like a straight ankle lock, where I'm going for a heel hook. I can have my feet like this. I can put my foot on his hip. I can put both feet on the outside this way. But what you're not allowed to do is to bring this outside leg across the body. And it's called reaping the knee. By turning his knee in this way, this is considered an, this is an illegal move you'll get. It used to be instant DQ if you did this. Like if you went from here and just pushed this across, they disqualify you instantly. Now what they usually do is they'll stop you, put your foot here, and reset you. Okay, so basically you can bring your, you can cross your feet on the outside. You just, in general, most tournaments, you can't bring your foot across the hip like this. Unless it's a submission only tournament with special rules, then you can do whatever you want, okay? But the one that you're gonna be doing on Saturday, they go by the IBJJF, which is like the standard rule set. Um, so basically, like, if you go for an ankle lock, keep your feet on the outside or cross your feet on the outside like this. Don't bring your feet across. All right. So those are like the two main things that are illegal. Um, and what, why is that illegal? They say that it, it puts too much pressure on the knee. Yeah. Which is kind of silly because there's a you can you can twist the guy's knee from any other position except for that so one. It's already pretty dangerous as it is. <laughs> right. Yeah. You're already yeah. twisting people's joints all over the place. So it's a silly old rule. Um, I don't agree with it, but just be aware of it. Okay. Um, and then once you lay back. So like you were asking about strangling somebody like this, you can use this to post on somebody's neck to keep distance. If he's trying to like if you try to sit up, I can push on your neck. I'm just not allowed to actually squeeze and try to like finish you by crushing your windpipe. Okay. Um, you're also not allowed to do what's called a muffler, 
usually covering the mouth with your hand. I'm not going to do it to you. <laughs> um, but you can't do that. You're not allowed to. You can't grab one finger or two fingers. If you grab the hand, you have to control all the fingers. But you can't grab like one. Okay. okay. So even if you're like in the middle of choking me, I can't grab one finger and peel it off. I have to grab all and peel it off. Could that make someone tap though? Or no? Usually not. All okay. right. It's rare that you're in a position of dominance and you'll yeah, crash yeah, my finger yeah, yeah. and make them tap. <laughs> but, so we, but it's also a good thing to remember. If I want to control your hand and holding your wrist, you can move your arm all over the place. But if I control your hand like this by holding your fingers, you have a lot more control over it. You're, you're almost always weaker at the end of your limb than you mm -hmm. are like in the center. Gotcha. So it's a good thing to remember if you want to control somebody's hand to use like a two on one and control like the knuckles and the wrist. That makes it very hard for them to use their hand. But if I just hold like this, you can easily pull that away. Okay. But if I'm holding like this, it's much harder. Yeah. Okay. Um, so don't grab fingers, no mufflers, no chokes like that. Um, no reaping, no slamming. I think that's it for now. If I think of anything else, I'll let you know. No eye gouging? No eye gouging, no biting, no hair pulling, um, no punching, no kicking, no elbowing. Okay. It's just grappling, just jujitsu for now. Gotcha. All right, so now we're gonna go over uh, some simple tournament strategy and concepts for you to use, for you to think about for this weekend. Mm -hmm. All right? Cool. So like I said, it's always gonna start on the feet. So, yep, good stance. So whatever leg you have forward, you have that hand lower. And it doesn't have to be like this. Yeah, okay. Just, it can just be here. Okay. And what what we call a down block is all you're gonna do if, if you see somebody reach for that lead leg, you just extend the arm down like that. So you want to get something in between me and you. Mm -hmm. So we're here. As I go to reach for the leg, just basically shoot this down under my arm. Yep. And I'll pull that leg back. Yep. So now the harder I try to reach for it, I'll never actually be able to get it. Even if I were to get my hands on it, let me grab it. If I were to get my hands on it, you just push the arm away and kick the leg back. You'll always be able to break that. Okay. Simple thing to think about. And now that hand, so I'll do it to you. I have my lead leg down here. You go to grab it, I down block, and now this hand can, can attack. Okay, yeah. so I start off with my lead hand down, and now I can use this hand, because this leg's harder for you to get to, mm -hmm. I can push with that hand, and All I right. can use that to grab and start going. All right, start. gotcha. All right, so what I want you to focus on is, we're not gonna spend a lot of time doing uh, wrestling it takes a lot of time to develop like good takedowns. I think you mm -hmm. wrestled before a little bit, right? Yeah, in school. Yeah, so all the wrestling you know you can use, but what I want you to focus on is getting front headlocks. All right. right. It's a simple way to do it. And the easiest thing to remember, anytime your head comes to my armpit level, I can get it, okay? If your head's here, I'll never be able to get a front headlock. But all I need to do is get you to bring your head forward a little bit, and then I can snag it, Okay. okay? So, the way you get that to happen is going to be very hard to just grab somebody's head and pull it down. What you want to do is start off by pushing. So, lead hand down, I start to push. I start to push. Don't let me push you. Don't let me push you. See, so you let me push you and stop me from pushing. So, see how to get me to stop from pushing, he has to push back into me. Right? And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, either hand to the back of the neck. I'm going to pull my leg back and bring the head down. All right? So, I want you to start off. Lead hand down, make contact, good. Now start pushing me back. Now see how my, yeah. see, you didn't even need to snap me down. Yeah. Just by pushing me again. When my feet go back like this, my feet are behind my head, mm -hmm. there's nothing holding me up. So even if you just took that hand away, my head comes down. Okay, so that's what I want you to think about. Hand on my shoulder, other hand on my shoulder. Always try to get inside of the arms, okay? So if I'm swimming inside, you swim inside. Yep. Keep the inside position. So now, Push in a little bit. Once you see my feet come back and I'm pushing back, mm -hmm. this hand's gonna go to my head. Snap it down. Yep. Now you have the front headlock. Now all you're gonna do is circle your hips uh, this way and sprawl your legs back. Get in your stance. Make contact. Push. My feet are back. Yep. Perfect. It's gonna be my move. Maybe. Another way you can sort of set that up is to make the guy step back. So sometimes if I'm pushing, I don't imagine too many guys are going to be able to stop him from pushing them. But if you get against a guy that's somehow stronger than you, all right, what you want to do is use like a fake shot to get his leg back. All right. Um, so once you put that leg forward, or, he's got that leg forward. What I'm going to do is 
I'm either gonna make contact with this hand and use my rear hand. You have to drop your level and reach, okay? If he lets you grab it, you take it. But if he pulls it back, his head is lower again, okay? So we tie up, I make contact. I'm gonna reach for that one, pull it back. Okay, so same thing. So I have this leg forward, just grab here. Now, drop your level, squat, reach. Yep. So just kind of going back and forth, right? Like It's always gonna be, you always wanna create a reaction. Like I said, it's gonna be almost impossible to just grab somebody and pull them into anything. Yeah. So you always create a push-pull. So the first one is we push first, and as soon as he pushes back, we pull. This one, our push is more a push at the leg, okay? So I'm, I push, you pull back, then I pull, okay? It's always a push-pull. So always try to create a reaction before you, you, you do the snap, all right? I would recommend that you focus on that first one we do. Yeah. Right? So push, push, my feet are back, snap, yep. Good one. Come in and push. So now, my leg stays forward, reach for it. So that's what I'm gonna recommend for your takedown, all right? Um, so once you snap me down, so let's say I push in, you snap me down. Now I want you to spin behind. Perfect, now, once you get to here, you're gonna sag all your weight onto this side, pull me onto my side. Put your hooks in. Good, establish control by squeezing your knees. Good. From this position, the person's gonna be holding onto your wrist like this. Take this hand, peel my top hand down. Bring this to my shoulder. Yep, now pull this hand out. Lock up the rear naked choke. It's that simple to tap out a black belt, <laughs> just saying. So, okay. we'll go front headlock again. So you snap me down to here, you spin behind. Seat belt grip, sag your weight, control this wrist. Okay. So that would be like an ideal scenario. You snap down, spin behind, submit. Okay. All right. But what is gonna happen a lot of times is, let's say you snap me down, and then the person is able to let go, pull you into their guard. So now he's gonna have to pass the guard. All right, so you've done pretty well at this. Yep, you have good posture. First thing is opening the guard. Yep, so create some distance. Yeah, press the leg down and slide the knee over. All right, the most basic way to think about this from here is first get chest to chest. All right, bring your head to this shoulder over here. Wrap this arm tight around my neck. Good. So you already have, see how he has his foot hooked on? Press his foot into the floor, pop tripod your leg up, and then slide right to the side, not over here. Yep, three points. Okay, so that's if the person's able to pull you in the guard. Now we'll work, so we already have the submission from the back as the rear naked. Uh -huh. Now we'll do the, the uh, Kimura from the top, right. okay? We've done that before. So once you're inside now, you're gonna make a switch, okay? So this arm is gonna come to the other side of my body. This arm's gonna come to the other side. Yep, stick your thumb under my elbow here. Yep, walk around my head. Turn me up onto my side. This way. Good. Now grab your wrist with this hand. Grab your armrest. Yep. Now what I want you to do is use this leg and cover my head. Put over my head. Put your knee down. Knee down. Yeah, like that. Now pull my hand up. Put it behind my back. Good. Again. Uh, so make that switch with your arms. Lock the hip. Good, walk around. Remember, so, yeah, cover my head with your knee. Very good. Right. And if that doesn't work, I don't know what else to tell you. Go crazy. Yeah. Go then crazy. Slam. Yeah. <laughs> if, if that one doesn't work, yeah, I pull out my knife. So, I mean, that's like your basic, your, your best case scenario. Like, that's, you know, Everything goes well, that's what happens. Yeah. You snap down, spin behind, choke him. He pulls you in his guard, you pass. But, you know, you might get a takedown and the rest of the match you're trying to pass the guy's guard. Yep. You're still up on two points. So um, don't be too concerned with 
I have to do this, I have to do this, I have to do this. It's just the, the matches are so dynamic and fluid that anything can change at any time. He might come out and blast double leg yeah, you across yeah, the mat, yeah. and you might end up on your back right away. Yeah. Okay, so I'll give you a, a simple way to sort of get off your back. All right. All right. Um, so let's say I take you down, right? Um, I'm gonna step over, move to half guard. So it's tough to get up from this full guard position, like if you lock your legs. So especially nogi, it's hard for a beginner that doesn't have many attacks from here to use this position. This is good for the guy on top because I can basically just like keep you down on your back from here. If the guy goes to pass, what I would do for you is I would turn, uh, turn on this side, open your legs up and let the guy go to half guard. Because you're pretty good from this position. Make sure you hook that bottom leg. So this is called half guard. And what you always want to do from here is get an underhook on me. Right. So now from here, all you're going to do is you're going to rock to your back and throw your arm up over your head. Try to get me to post my hands above, my, above your head. So rock to your back. Post your hands up like that. Now snag the legs. Come up and take me down. Just knee tap. Yep. And now you just run to the side. So when you get here, run to the side. And you're back in that same position to go for the kimura. Underhook. Just like that. Pretty good. Yeah. So like I said, that should be sort of your basic game plan for when you go out there, but be prepared for anything to happen. You know? Yeah. Like I said, you might be on the feet the whole five minutes trying to get the takedown. You know? Um, I, I don't think you will, but. Gotcha. And then uh, in terms of like, you know, practice versus reality, we were kind of talking about you get an adrenaline dump, yeah. like all that kind of stuff. So what can someone expect the day of the competition and how to get through it? Um, a couple things I tell people to always bring. Bring your own toilet paper. <laughs> because these places run out of toilet paper really quick. Everybody's got nervous bowels. Yeah. So the bathrooms get destroyed. Um, toilet paper, food, whatever you like to eat a day of competition. Uh -huh. I'm sure you have like some, some stuff yeah. that you normally do. Um, water, whatever music you like, and just try to stay relaxed. The hardest part about these days is you could spend six hours just sitting around waiting, you know, and not knowing when you're going to go. Um, so that's the toughest part is the waiting. Mm. Um, once you get out there, the t toughest part about once you're out there is staying relaxed. Okay. Especially your first time. People rarely remember what happens their first time. You know, you yeah. usually have to like break it down for them afterwards. Like this is what happened. <laughs> yeah. um, so no matter what, how good a shape you're in physically, it's, uh, it's really like I was saying the other day, it's, it's your mind. It's mm -hmm. going to like, determine whether you get super exhausted or if you're able to just focus on executing your techniques. Mm -hmm. um, so try to, as much as you can, try not to think about fighting and winning. Try to think about just executing moves, mm -hmm. you know, um, just executing the game plan. Focus on that rather than like fighting the guy in front of you. Like the guy in front of you doesn't matter. It's like, it could be, it's a grappling dummy that you're using, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so that's how, basically how you want to think and approach, approach the match. Just gotcha. focus on executing your game plan, not thinking, What's he going to do? What am I going to do? Um, stuff like that. Sweet. There you guys have it. That's the game plan for uh, a couple days out for my first competition. He'll be there coaching me. We'll video it. So hopefully <laughs> what we just practiced will happen. Or it's just going to be a shit show. <laughs> either way, it's first either time. Way be, either, yeah. either way, it's a learning experience. Exactly. Like, you go out yeah. there and get smashed your first time, Yeah. you learn. You know? Exactly. Yep. So. Don't, part of the don't, process. don't be obsessed with winning and winning or losing, especially not your first time out there. It's great if you win. Yeah. But I mean, you'll see either way, whether you win or you lose the next day, you still got to go back to work. Yep. It's the same, it's the same yeah. bullshit. I say about straw man. I was like, you can't take it too seriously if you're thrown down in a parking lot. Like, exactly. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean, it's yep. like, we all love it, but it's, you know, there's more to come and always something to learn from. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Thanks coach Tim. I appreciate it. Where, uh, where can we follow you again on social uh, media? Hellfish Mixed Martial Arts on YouTube. Hellfish MMA on Instagram. Hellfish BJJ on Instagram. Uh, Tim Carpenter on Facebook. I don't even know if that's, I think that's just a personal page. I don't know if it's a business thing. It's but, growing. It's just, yeah. yeah, it's him. I'm new to the whole internet world. And if you guys had heard this creature in the background the whole time, uh, there lies the, the devil dog. Uh-oh. <laughs> wow, come here. Let's see if we can get him. Come here, bud. He's looking into my soul.
Trustworthy. Mm -hmm. This is El Guapo. <laughs> the real <laughs> Jiu Jitsu master. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. <laughs> Any fun facts about El Guapo? He's uh, nine years old. He snakes. He's lazy. What kind of dog is that? He's a Renaissance bulldog. Renaissance. Uh, basically, I tell him he was just an old English bulldog. But. Okay. It looks cooler than one. Can you go on a skateboard? Nah, he can't really do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Is it focusing on him? Oh, yeah! Come here, Bubba. That's what he can do. He can slobber on Hello. stuff. Hello. You're adorable. Awesome.